Good morning, Paris. I hope you are all awake. Enjoyed the big party yesterday. I think it was a great occasion. A very heartily welcome from my side, I'm Michael, Michael Kienle. I'm the CEO of IT Novum, and I'm going to give you some ideas on how to combine an open source approach with software-defined storage, of course, for supporting a very smart storage platform for OpenStack. You probably has not come across uh, IT Novum yet. We are a German-based consultancy company focusing pretty much on open source. So we have the vision to help customers build and run a data center 100% on open source. That's our core mission. And um, of course, we're focusing very much on uh, things like software-defined data center and all these things. But as this is the OpenStack Summit today, uh, I'm not talking about data center in general. I'm talking about OpenStack and how we can support with different approaches OpenStack. One of the things which I'm going to tell you about is open source, and the other is software-defined storage. I'm starting with the later one. Of course, you want to use a smart software-defined storage when you're just building up your own clouds. Why? There are a lot of reasons for that. Of course, you want to have the elastic performance, the scalability, which is way easier with an SDS approach. You want to have multi-tenant service operations, and you want to combine a lot of your storage approaches into one unified system. But the most crucial thing when doing that is you need open APIs. If you look at the legacy storage system, they usually do not have an API, which does not help you to integrate your processes which you need when you're deploying clouds to the storage. But with OpenStack, you have the choice. There are a lot of APIs which you can use. Of course, there are some APIs right now, uh, like the current Cinder approach, for example, which is not very powerful, but I think things are going there. But at least you have the choice of your underlying storage system without a vendor login. And it's your choice if you want to go into a legacy support, into a commodity approach, or into an SDS approach. Or, of course, you can combine both. In terms of open source storage, yes, there are a lot of tools available right now. I think the real challenge is to pick the appropriate tools, combine these tools in a proper way that these are working on an enterprise grade and you do not have too much hassle in administration of these tools. You know, the data growth will be gigantic in the next couple of years. Uh, everybody's talking about 40, 50% per year. And the question really is if your IT budgets can cope with this growth. Are there any opportunities to make it way cheaper than your legacy approach? Yes, and with open source, you have the choice and you have the technology available, they can do it way cheaper. There are a lot of cost savings on the way. The next major thing when you decide to go open source is that you have no vendor lock-in. If you look at the storage approach from legacy vendors, you see they drive huge margins by bundling stuff. But you're locked in. You have no choice to work on the APIs. You have no choice on really think you need this module, the net functionality. And open source can drive you to that. It's not only about cost saving, about adding a lot of functionality to that. One of the things which is quite important here, the uh, automation and the abstraction of, of software from hardware, especially with open source, allows you a lot of functionalities to really use commodity hardware and build it up on the software-defined level to an enterprise-grade storage. So if you look at that framework picture, you see on the left side there are a lot of services and tools which are available right now in the open source space. But if you want to use that on an enterprise grade level, there's still a lot of work to do. A lot of work in combining a lot of these, and believe me, there are even dozens more. And you need to combine that on the back end, that everybody is working tightly integrated and smoothly. And of course, if you look at the red block here, you need a common API, a common API which, on the one hand, provides all the, the graphical user interface with all the function, but also an open API which helps your cloud approach 
to address all the underlying functionality here in a proper way. And if this is done so in a smart way, you can address all the functionality with the API. And that's a major advantage of this approach. I'm going to talk you through a couple of use cases for an open software-defined storage approach in an open stack environment. There are basically four. There are a lot more, but uh, you know, time is running out quickly, so I just concentrate on these four. How to manage your commodity storage nodes in an open stack environment. The next uh, is the automate provisioning of resources through an open API, and the open API is quite important here. The third one, how to provide your storage infrastructure with a high availability approach. And the fourth, how to monitor your storage config without too much manual work. So let's start off with the first one, the easy management of commodity storage. You know, if you're using commodity storage, it's quite easy. You get the, the hardware. You can collect a lot of tools if you're using about Linux as a standard platform and a couple of tools. But then you end up in a situation, if it's about to scale on a large level, you want to apply 1,000 or 10,000 of servers, you leak a lot of petabytes on storage, there's a lot of work to do from the administrative perspective. So what you really need there you need something which we call a storage operating system, which is way more than a pure Linux platform to help you in doing this. At the top, you see some screenshots of things we've done already to combine the things, but I'll get later to that. So what you need really is a single point of administration for all these tools. And you know, when you're working with 30, 40, 50 tools on the underlying platform, you need a tool which helps you everything to administrate easily. And then you have the choice basically to compete with all the legacy vendors and providing all these nice features you need and you're quite used to when you run with one of the major vendors. The second one is about automation of provisioning processes. You know, when you look at OpenStack, especially with the Cinder module, you see that the Cinder API, and you see here in the, the green box the, the current API, there's not much functionality. You can just create a volume, you can create a snapshot, but that's basically it. If you look at the storage you're used to and the functionality in the storage you're used to, you see there are a lot of things you really want to have when you run an enterprise grade cloud, like mirroring, high availability, replication, consistent snapshots of applications like databases, so all these things which are kind of nice to have. But this is currently not supported by Cinder. So you have to find some, some other ways. On the one hand, using Cinder on the volume control to get the target, but then there's a lot of work to do, like high availability, mirroring, clustering, all this stuff, which is not done by Cinder. So you need one more thing to take care of this. You do not want to make it manually. You think of some automation processes. And again, the open API is very important here. If you have an open API to your storage system, it helps you to accomplish these processes very easily. I've already talked about high availability. If you look at Cinder and its native form, you do not see much about high availability. And of course, yes, it really depends on the, the type of setup for your cloud, but high availability could be quite important, even on the storage level, if you run an enterprise-grade cloud. High availability, as you might know, really depends on your setup, your policy, uh, the know-how of your employees, your distribution as well. And of course, if you want to go on a, on a local or just a metro high availability scenario, you do a synchronous or asynchronous. Um, you have the, the, the um, amount of cluster nodes, which is important. So really helping you to pick up the right tools for that. And of course, you know, if you look at the Linux platform scenario, there are a lot of tools available like DRBD, Corosync, Pacemaker, which can really bring you a lot of value in getting to the high availability scenarios. But what you need to do then 
you need to configure each of these tools individually, which, of course, you do not want when you scale up uh, to a large scenario. The next thing, if you want to run enterprise-grade clouds, is you need some kind of storage monitoring. You really want to see if uh, all the volumes are filling up, if there are some, some issues uh, around that. And you do not want to have a look at that. If you look at OpenStack and Cinder, uh, there's no automated way right now in that. So you need to add this functionality as well. And if you're familiar with open source, you know that there are tools available like Nagios, for example, which basically helps you in monitoring all these things. So the next one is, if you just want to look at the old open source framework, you need to combine a lot of things to really get to the enterprise grade level. For example, doing um, SLA management, SLA reporting on that as well. So that's what we basically already did. Combine a lot of open source tools into one framework, which is open, as we are an open source company. Uh, we called it Open Attack. Uh, and it helps you to build all these enterprise gate storage functionality for different cloud platforms on 100% open source. So you get all the features which we combined into this Open Attack platform. A unified storage with all the unified storage approaches you already have, like different protocols and all this standard stuff. A smart software-defined storage layer, which is fully accessible via an open API, providing you monitoring, high availability, application snapshotting, all this stuff. And the cloud storage sync with the uh, specific cloud API and uh, the object store functionality. As we are an open source company, yes, of course, there is a free community edition. You might have guessed that already. But of course, we offer other services on top of that. So you see, currently, Cinder is just not enough for enterprise-grade scenarios. Uh, but the good news is there are a lot of things which you can add on top, on top of an existing open source framework. You just need to do it in a very clever way. You need to combine a lot of things which are there. And then you can provide a very high-end software-defined storage on top of open source, which works perfectly for cloud setups and as well for OpenStack. And of course, we have a Cinder driver. So um, if you just uh, want to have a look at it, just go to openatic.org. And hopefully, you just like it. And most important, feel free to contribute. There's a lot of things which you can add, a lot of things which you can modify for yourself. But of course, communities are always uh, living a lot of people are contributing. I would be quite happy if you do so. If you need any other things like uh, services, go to openatic.com, which is the commercial version. Thanks a lot for attending in the early morning session today. Uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me right now or catch up with me later as I'll be around here. We have uh, integrated already Ceph from, from the API that you can uh, deliver different type of the, um, the storage loan, which is then uh, on the back end realized with Ceph. Uh, we have it not on the GUI in the, the open source um, version right now. This will be probably in, in three or four months' time. They have this available. They can have all the, the graphic user interface to administrate different things like the Cinder, the Swift integration, and then the backend stuff. But the most important thing, we want to have it on a, uh, on a general graphic user interface approach. One graphic user interface to manage all the different storage which you have to support your OpenStack cloud. Any other questions? Here. Probably still asleep. <laughs> okay, if you do not have any questions, thanks a lot for this. Enjoy your day. I hope it will be a nice day for you with a lot of uh, good ideas, a lot of talks, and see you soon. Thanks. <laughs>